RougeRadio.com. Jen here with a training camp preview with Jock Clowney. Hi. How are you? So training camps have been open um, for about a week everywhere. And I'm very glad I'm not in one of them. First thing I thought of the one uh, the one day when I walked out of the office and it was blasting about 35 degrees, uh, and I thought to myself, yeah, there, there, there were many years where I, I endured that, and I am so happy not to be doing it anymore. It is... Uh, <laughs> It is a, it, it tests you uh, as a man, as a human being, as a football player, in every way, shape, or form. Start with Montreal. This time of year, no one really knows what's going on, to be honest. But, you know, they're obviously a football team coming off back-to-back championships. And, and uh, I have no doubt uh, starting to imagine uh, the idea of, of, of having, a, you know, they're building their legacy, really. You know, are they going to be... Uh, be that dominant team that, that people talk about the same breadth as the uh, the, the Eskimos of the 70s and 80s, and, and another championship would put them in that that kind of a category. Uh, so no doubt they're trying to find the pieces, um, you know, with a with a bit of an aging football team, uh, but with a quarterback and Anthony Cavio who's uh, not showing any signs of, of slowing down. So uh, you know, as long as they've got Cavio and Tresman there, uh, that's a football team that's going to win some games. Very true. I mean, he every year people wait for Covio to start to look older, and every year he doesn't. Yep, that's very true, and it's got a lot to do with his style of play. Uh, you know, he's a guy who gets rid of the football very quickly, doesn't need to move around a lot in the pocket. Uh, he's very smart with the ball, and uh, he's you know he's got to be in a certain amount of physical shape, and uh, uh, he uh, he certainly works hard enough to, to make sure he stays. Uh, at that level, and so uh, there's no reason why he can't play another another couple of years. And they've had some kicking uh, changes. Yeah, they sure have. You know, they 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 obviously got rid of Damon Val, and uh, uh, you know he he struggled. And uh, when when you uh, when you risk uh, when you risk having your team lose a great cup because of uh, inconsistency and almost lost it for them two years ago. That was just a matter of time. So there's a big change there, and obviously Avon Coborn is probably the biggest change. I mean, obviously people will talk about Ben Cahoon leaving, and, and uh, no doubt uh, he's a he's a huge fixture uh, that's now gone to that organization. But Ben was not uh, doing the things that he used to do, you know, two or three years ago, uh, really for them. So uh, I don't think that uh, uh, that's a huge loss as long as they can find someone to catch the ball underneath. And I have no doubt that Jim Pop and Mark Tresman will find somebody to do that. But uh, to be able to uh, replace Avon Coburn is going to be their biggest uh, challenge. So we have, um, next, let's go eastward, we have the Toronto Argos. Not surprisingly, quarterbacking is, you know, one of the number one things that fans want to know about going into camp. Yeah, and and for good reason. So, uh, you know, their quarterback situation just just looks, uh, looks so much better right now. You know, Cleo Lemon, first of all, uh, uh, won some football games in the last year. He did it in an ugly fashion and not a way that uh, impressed me, I can tell you. But uh, uh, he did find ways to win. And with one year under his belt in the CFL, he's going to be better. Uh, he's also going to be a lot better with having Stephen Giles uh, pushing him in training camp. Uh, I, I frankly will be amazed that Stephen Giles does not end up taking the starting job as the season opens. But I also uh, – that you might see a platooning of those two guys all year, depending on who's playing well. But uh, I think Giles is a heck of a football player, and uh, I fully anticipate him uh, uh, making that team better. Uh, it's not at the beginning, it's only by the end of this year. Definitely. Uh, what about the special teams? Are we going to see the same kind of special teams wizardry out of Mike O'Shea? Well, you know, there's no question that he's going to feel a lot of pressure to do that. Uh, but you know, that, those kinds of gimmicky stuff, you know, you, you know, everybody talked about it last year, but, you know, how many how many, how many, many gimmicks did he really run? Uh, you know, there might have been two or three plays over the course of an 18-game season, uh, plus playoffs. You know, that's hundreds and hundreds of plays, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of special teams, and he made a name for himself based on a couple of trick plays. Um, and obviously, they're, you know, they had some big plays, you know, with pump returns and that sort of thing, but every team does that. So, uh, you know, they, they have to continue to be cautious. I mean, you, you don't want to become uh, a, a team of gimmicks. You can't, you can't, you can't succeed uh, by simply running out there every game and, and trying to pull those kinds of stunts off. But uh, I, I certainly expect that he will continue to to, uh, to be innovative and try to come up with things so that even if again this year he's got two or three plays that make a difference, uh, he'll emerge as keep. 
What do you think about um, Chad Owens and Corey Boyd coming back? Well, you know, they're, they're a huge part of that football team. Uh, they, 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 those two were, were probably the, the football team last year. Uh, there's not many teams in the CFL that could say that their, their MVPs are, are not their quarterbacks. Uh, and in this, in last year, certainly for, for Toronto, it was those two guys. Uh, Cleo Lemon would be a distant third uh, in terms of the importance to the team. Uh, and, I, and I love watching both of those guys play. They're, they're incredibly exciting. They're fantastic athletes. And uh, they bring a lot to the CFL. So I'm glad they're back. Okay, moving on, uh, just down the QEW to Hamilton. Well, you know, Hamilton. Hamilton's a football team at nine and nine last year. That uh, uh, everybody keeps hoping that they're going to challenge Montreal for for a berth in the Grey Cup. And, and uh, hey, they're they're a lot better than they were a few years ago, uh, but they're still not where they they they, they, they need to be. Uh, I think Avon Coburn's uh, presence is going to make a big difference there. Um, and, and, you know, Cobb, just the Andrew Cobb was simply not getting it done, and I believe really hurt that football team last year. I think his running style, his inability to get positive yardage in, cru- in crucial situations uh, hurt the team, uh, and I think Coborn being a much more north-south runner, uh, hard-nosed runner, is going to uh, help uh, help Kevin Glenn in that offense. Uh, I also think, you know, Otis Floyd's uh, uh, a bit of a loss, but they've done a good job. Uh, and bring in, bring in another guy to, to fill that gap. Uh, you know, they're, they're a good, solid football team. They have a good receiving core. Uh, you know, their defensive backs conti- backfield continues to be their area of concern and the area that they really want to uh, uh, improve in. And uh, if they can do that, uh, you know, they should do better than, than 500 uh, this year. And the last team in the East, uh, we have the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Well, they're the big mystery, right? I mean, there's, 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 there's mysteries all around with that football team. They, they played so well at the end of last year and started looking like they uh, they could even make a playoff run for, for a few games. Um, but, you know, that was all Stephen Giles, and now they, they traded him away. Buck Pierce is a heck of a quarterback. No question he is a starter in this league and he's a star. Um, and has been a star at different times. But his, his, his injury situation is such that it amazed me that they decided to, um, to trade away uh, the one guy who could fill in for him. Uh, so, uh, Buck Pierce and, and his health is going to be a, a big factor for the Bombers uh, going into this year. Uh, but they, they had some exciting new players last year. They got some receivers that that, uh, that really uh, began to shine last year. Uh, so, you know, it's a football team with Fred Reed at running back uh, and, a, and a, pretty solid, uh, a pretty solid defensive secondary that, uh, that should be competitive provided the quarterback stays healthy. So do you think the Bombers are going to make the playoffs? Well, you know, I think it probably it depends entirely on Buck Pierce's health, and it depends on whether or not Toronto uh, ends up being, and Toronto and Hamilton, in terms, of, in terms of how they end up being. So if, if Toronto and Hamilton live up to expectations, I, I would expect Winnipeg to be out of the playoffs once again. Uh, but, you know, all it takes is a Kevin Glenn injury, you know, uh, for Toronto to have that uh, – those problems offensively that they had last year, if that were to continue, I would expect Winnipeg to make the playoffs before Toronto, uh, unless Toronto gets the production out of the quarterback position. Okay, moving on to the West. 